this will be an interesting one. So back to back cases with origins that are of questionable airflow. This is the Thermal Take View 37. We've previously looked at the Thermal Take View 71. They have some similarities. One of the primary ones is the fan orientation. Each case, the View 71 previously and now the 37, have two rain fans in them for the stock non-RGB configuration, and that has them positioned bottom front and top rear. Now, somewhat shockingly to us, the View 71 actually did pretty damn well. And a lot of that was because of the rest of the case. So for that case, although it was tempered glass everywhere, there were gaps in the paneling all over the place and also no power supply shroud. This one has one of those features. It's got no power supply shroud, which always tends to help with GPU thermals, but it does actually lack the gap effect of the View 71. And that's because it has what Thermal Take, I believe, calls a panoramic panel, which is this side acrylic panel here that covers the entire enclosure uh, for the top and the side. And you lose one structural bar on the top, but that's for the open glass view. So we're gonna be reviewing this one today. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our coffee lake temperatures. Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like Cryonaut and Hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. We generally try not to have too many expectations going into a product review, but you can't help building some of them based on previous testing experience. Looking at this case, the instant reminder we got was H500P. And that's because the front is completely closed off and you've got a ventilation panel on the side, uh, basically some small vents on either side, then a closed off front, basically H500P. So you go into it expecting maybe not the best thermals, but we'll see how it does because the View 71 did pretty well with this configuration. They use very different fans and different layouts internally overall. The models of this case include the 110 dollar version that we have here, which is two fans, 140 rain non-RGB fans, and a $170 alternative, which has two RGB rain fans in the front. But getting into it, so the layout's pretty straightforward. You can mount fans in the front, 140s, 120s, and even 200s, which we did test, by the way. We'll have thermals on that in a bit. And uh, if you mounted 200s in the front, you can technically install those inside the chassis, which is something you could not do with the H500P. Uh, however, there's one big downside to that, and that's if you install them internally, you lose basically the entire outer edge of any LEDs you might have. And because Thermal Take, when they show their marketing images of this case with the 200 mounted externally on the outside of the chassis bars, that's how we ended up testing it. So if you do mount it that way, what you end up with is fans that are pushed right up against the acrylic, and we'll see how that goes in thermal testing. But uh, that's something we've talked about in the past. For the rest of it, there is technically the option to mount a radiator against the wall of the case towards the front above the hard drive cages, which are located down on the bottom front. And if you were to do that, you could push the air or pull it either way uh, out the other side panel, the right side panel from your perspective. So that's, I mean, it's, it's good that they actually have ventilation on this side over here because not every case that has uh, mounting support for radiators vertically will do that surprisingly enough uh, so they've done well there with something very basic but yeah you can mount a radiator there radiator in the front it is thermal take after all they do liquid cooling vertical gp is an option it's positioned somewhat significantly further back from the glass or the acrylic panel than typically but you're still going to run into thermal issues uh, with an open face cooled card as opposed to an open loop card, which would not have those issues. No power supply shroud as noted. And let's get the side panel off. This is the next, uh, next endeavor. It'll take a moment. So we'll just speed up the footage. So the point of that, like with the Corsair one, is to show that it takes a while to take off. Now they do actually have a good reason for that. Panel, the mounting mechanism I like a lot. So it slides out on rails like this and then you just pull out. And uh, pretty straightforward acrylic panel. But the reason that it takes so many screws to get the thing off is because 
as you might expect, you're lacking a structural support beam here. So when that panel is on and this isn't in there, which it was not during CES, it's been added. It's got four screws and it goes over the back corner right there. Without that in there and the extra four screws, if you apply some torque, like some torsional force to the chassis, it can actually somewhat bend and warp in a way that you lose contact between the acrylic side panel and the front and the back. Fortunately, they've got the extra screws in there. It still is a bit structurally weak on that corner. Uh, I mean, you can certainly flex it. Is that relevant? Probably not so much. However, it is a quality, uh, a perceived quality difference that isn't great, but also you can't do a whole lot about it. The only thing that I could think of would be perhaps a triangular arm up here that comes down and braces against the top corner of the case and braces against this wall. But uh, then you run into fan clearance issues as well. So what they've done is better than what I could come up with given the parameters that are uh, in this situation. If you want full support for everything, you're not going to be able to have extra structure uh, or support beams there without either adding an ugly bar here, adding ugly bars there that block some fan ports. So that's the only note on structural and build quality that's really a negative is that there, there is some flexing and bowing. And uh, basically what it comes down to is when you're done with the build, you put the system on the ground, just apply some light pop force on the sides to make sure that the panels are all flush and you don't have air gaps. So it's a bit inconvenient to get the panel off, but not a huge deal. It's just something we've been complaining about a lot lately. Either way though, we'd rather have the extra screws than not in this case. A couple of other points here before going through thermals and some of Patrick's build notes. Uh, first of all, externally, this is a bit odd. The bottom here comes almost all the way down to the table. There's a very limited amount of clearance, less, way less than an inch. Uh, and the result is mounting a fan in the bottom, although it will somewhat help the video card, you're fighting against uh, basically the power supply because there's no real place for a fan, although you can put one there, there's no place for a fan in the bottom to really pull air through because it's got to either fight against this side skirt, which leaves you uh, fractions of an inch to breathe, or more realistically, you're fighting against the power supply, which is mounted here and is pulling in its own air. So uh, the only real place to breathe is in the back where there's about an inch of uh, height from the ground. And so that's where most of your air is coming in. But there's also a power supply fan back there to consider. So uh, they do have a full length dust filter, which is nice. It's got very thick bars on it, suboptimal for cooling, but not that relevant because ultimately the power supply is not going to care that much and mounting a fan in the bottom is inadvisable anyway. But that's your dust filter. It's a little bit annoying to put back in, not a huge deal. Uh, sometimes it kind of requires tilting the case to get it lined up right, but it'll eventually go in there. So that's most of the case. I'm gonna go through some of Patrick's build notes now. He had hands-on with it uh, pretty extensively, and then we'll go through the thermal and noise testing. So a couple of things here, removing or replacing the bottom front stock fan is somewhat of a pain. The front panel and both side panels must be removed. The hard drive tray near it must be removed to reveal the screws on the back of the hard drive cage. Four screws must be removed to release the cage. Four further screws can then be removed from the cage mount and allow extra screwdriver room. And then the fan can be unscrewed from the case. So it's a lot of steps to get a fan out. We'd like to see removable fan trays like the 500D had and a couple of other cases recently or a more easily removable hard drive cage. At least it's not riveted, but we feel like this is something that thermal take could relatively easily improve and it would improve the ease of installation a lot. We're talking about a whole bunch of extra screws versus just a couple if they added in a removable fan cage or a more easily removed hard drive cage. Getting into the thermal testing, before this next part, our standardized case test bench is on the screen now as sponsored by Cable Mod. You can find their cable extensions linked in the methodology section of the article if you're curious. Let's talk about our thermal testing configurations. We tested the vertical GPU mount and with the front panel removed as usual, we also tested with two 200 millimeter rain intake fans installed in the front, both with and without the front panel. There's a decent amount of ventilation on either side of the front panel, but none at the bottom and obviously none at the top of the case due to the acrylic window. Clearance between the front panel and stock fans is tight and it's even worse when the thicker 200 millimeter rains were added later. Clearance could be much better if the fans were mounted inside the case again, which is actually possible, 
but doing that with the 200 millimeter fans would cover up their LEDs and defeat the whole purpose of having them. Secondarily, advertisements show the case with 200 millimeter fans mounted to the outside of the chassis, so that's what we tested. With the fans moved inside the chassis, just expect the results to be between stock and no front panel results. No need to test it separately. Starting with the VU37 on the charts with just CPU temperatures, the stock configuration operates a CPU temperature of 54.7 degrees Celsius over ambient when using a single 140 millimeter fan in the bottom front. This fan is mounted in the bottom front again by default, but there's also a 140 in the top rear, like the VU71, just without the large airflow gaps in the panels that the VU71 had. Removing the stock fan and replacing it with two ring fans mounted like Thermal Takes advertising shows results in functionally equivalent CPU performance. There is no uplift from adding the large fan that's directly in line with the CPU, which points towards similar front panel suffocation issues that we saw with the original H500P, and also just limited intake. Vertical GPU mounting reduces strain on the CPU a bit by moving the backplate's radiative heat away from the heat sink as we've seen before. Removing the front panel doesn't improve the stock configuration much, down to 52 degrees, but we can see a change with the two 200 millimeter fans. For this configuration, we move from 54.9 degrees over ambient to 46.9 degrees over ambient, an improvement of about eight degrees by removing the front panel, quite substantial, that gives us an idea for airflow impedance. And again, if you mounted them internally, you could expect somewhere in between those two numbers. We did a quick anemometer spot check for this, again, using one of these hot wires, just to better understand the panel impedance. So what we came up with is pretty simple. With the VU37 panel on, we measured airflow of 560 linear feet per minute versus 940 in our particular point of measurement with the panel removed. That's a significant change in performance, from a front panel alone and indicates that some additional mesh spacing on the sides could help or a cutout in the top or the bottom if there can be no cutouts in the front because they just want it to look the way it does. So a uh, quick note though, those numbers, the linear feet per minute airflow numbers can't be compared to the other cases or fans we've tested because we're testing them in different ways. These are spot checks, so we're testing against only the case we're talking about today. It's this case against itself basically with and without the panel not comparable to the H500P mesh. For the comparative CPU chart, comparatively, the Thermaltake VU37 performs about equivalently to the VU71 for CPU thermals. This makes sense as both cases distance the CPU far from the stock intake. Rear exhaust creates a natural pressure to pull air in that direction, but we're still running on the warmer half of this truncated chart. The VU37, for all of its acrylic and limited intake, performs at not too distant from the original H500P. No big surprise given the similar design for the front panel. The VU71 was a case we praised for excellent GPU thermals, so we'll see if the 37 can carry this in the next few charts. For now, it's off to a mediocre, if predictable, start for cooling on the CPU. For GPU testing, the VU37 stock GPU thermals operate at 51 degrees Celsius over ambient, improving to 49 degrees with no front panel. That's not a large movement from the panel removal and again suggests limitations on the fan configuration. We would see a larger disparity with more fans, Using two 200 millimeter fans performs at worse than a single 140 fan, despite the case's marketing photos and initial CES unveil driving a 200 millimeter narrative. It's unfortunate as the reasons for this poor performance are exactly the same as the H500P. A single 140 is doing fine, but two 200s with LEDs visible end up smashed against acrylic. There's no room to breathe. Removing the panel gives us some performance improvement for the 200s though. Vertical GPU mounting is, as is often the case, best reserved for open loop cooling configurations. In this instance, we proved that, again, it's a problem not unique to Thermaltake. It's basically been a trend for the last year. Vertically oriented, the GPU operates at 66.4 degrees Celsius over ambient. Factor in ambient, and that puts us nearing 90 degrees. Pascal hard throttles at 84, so we're dropping clocks hard here, losing frame rate, and we end up with a vertical GPU orientation that's not great for air-cooled cards, but again, not unique to thermal take. Reserve this for liquid cooled cards only. The upshot though is that unlike its competitors, thermal take does actually properly accommodate a taller PCB card while having an air cooler. Most of the other ones don't have the clearance for the larger PCBs. Comparatively, the VU37 actually does shockingly well for stock GPU cooling performance when left with a single 140 millimeter fan in the front and one in the back, it's stock configuration. This is certainly better than leveraging the looks-oriented 200 millimeter slots in the case. The VU37 manages, with its 51 degree readout, to place functionally equivalently to the Corsair 570X and the VU71, both cases that we actually liked for their GPU cooling performance. 
These cases are within margin of error of the View 37, and similarity to the View 71 makes sense given the airflow configuration. The View 37 is also within margin of error of the stock H500P mesh, which we just got done praising for its significant thermal improvements. If you remember that review, the H500P mesh has large dead zones across from the 200mm intake fan on the graphics card, responsible for the stack that we're seeing here. The View 37 performed far better than we expected, truth be told. That single rain fan in the front is a good one, better than most stock fans in most cases, and it's positioned in a way that directly benefits the GPU, arguably the most important element to cool because the CPUs don't have clock throttling until much higher temperatures, unlike the more sensitive GPUs, which throttle marginally every 5 degrees or so. The result is a mediocre CPU cooling performance, and given the lack of fans on the top of the same panel, that makes sense, but very competitive GPU performance for what the case is advertising, which is looks. A large part of this performance is the lack of the PSU shroud in the bottom, combined with a bottom-focused airflow. Power supply shrouds eat GPU performance by trapping a lot of warmed air, forcing recirculation into the card, and this case illustrates how much design can change performance even in spite of fan configurations. The Firestrike Extreme workload only raised average GPU temperature to 52.7 degrees, roughly equal to the H500P mesh and only beaten by the PM01, RB02, and half x That's excellent for a case like this, and really surprising given the lack of ventilation, but again, it speaks to the quality and positioning of that single fan in the front. With only one intake fan aiming it along the bottom of the case, it's a good choice to set it up the way it is. Rendering our monkey head test image against the CPU averaged a CPU temperature of 37.2 degrees, equivalent to Thermaltake's Core P3 and View 71 enclosures. Those aren't cases with a focus on CPU cooling, but they are well ventilated, so the View 37 is in good company. Cases with more active airflow towards the top, like the RL06 and H500P mesh, outperform this one, but it definitely isn't leaving hot air trapped around the CPU cooler. GPU accelerated rendering averaged 25.9 degrees Celsius Delta T over ambient on the GPU, again roughly equivalent to the View 71. There are better cooled cases on the chart, but again they're all cases that we've specifically praised for their cooling. The Cougar Conquer, RV02, etc while the View 37 appears to be a sealed acrylic bubble, but still doing reasonably. Performance in all of these thermal tests was beyond what we were expecting, if still somewhat moderate. The noise level of the stock View 37 is almost exactly the same as the View 71 TG, because it has the same fans and the same layout. The 140mm rain fans stayed at around 1500 RPM during testing, so they were pretty noisy. So then we're left with the reminder that cases, or any product, are just as much an amalgamation of their set of features and quality as they are their marketing. In the instance of this case, the View 37 from the materials that we have pre-launched, which is the Newegg pages, uh, it doesn't look like thermal takes boasting about airflow. So can't nail them for that one. Uh, the airflow is okay. The thing is, the CPU does suffer a bit and that's something we saw with the View 71 as well. The reason it suffers is quite obvious. The GPU does pretty well. And if you're wondering why GPU cooling can do so well in spite of what is a completely closed off front, and we had tests for removing the panel and you saw the results, the reason it's doing pretty well is because that rain fan is actually a real fan. They're including decent fans with the case, so you don't need to go out and buy and replace it. It also spins pretty fast, and it's pretty loud, as you saw in the noise chart. Not terrible, but at the full 1400 to 1500 RPM, it's certainly a faster fan than most, especially for a 140. That's where the performance comes from for GPU cooling, in spite of the front panel. And then the lack of the power supply shroud is also significant, because it allows the GPU fans to do their own work without as much impedance as we've seen in other cases. Build quality is okay overall. The case has, again, some weaknesses right here, as you would expect and applying any kind of torsional force will cause a bit of a bowing or warping of the front and the back panels against the panoramic panel as it's mounted. Not a big deal, something they could probably try to improve, but there's not a lot that could be done without making the thing ugly or difficult to work with for fans. So overall, there's, there's really not a lot they could do there. Whether you like the panel is completely up to you. We're not gonna comment on that, it's entirely subjective, but uh, for the rest of the case, there's a ton of cable management room. I could fit my entire hand back there, so that's great. Uh, there's space, as a result, behind the motherboard tray for fans. If you wanted to do side-mounted intake or exhaust with a radiator, there's decent liquid cooling support. 
Uh, the fan in the front is a little bit annoying to access, not a big deal. Ease of installation could be worked on and improved for this case, as we've noted here and in the written review linked below. The rest of the problems are primarily things we've seen before, like open face cards struggling with the vertical GPU mount, not a surprise to anyone at this point, and 200 millimeter fans not really delivering what some might perceive would be the best performance, because they're just not, especially if you mount them externally, as in outside the frame so that you can see the LEDs, they don't do well. And that could be fixed if thermal take would add some space here for the mesh or the side intake, which is something we said about the H500P as well. So they've got avenues and vectors to improve this case. Quality wise, it's decent. It's, I, I put it at average. In terms of cooling, uh, GPU is actually competitive for where the case sits in terms of aesthetics, CPUs, below average and uh, noise is below average in that it's a bit louder and that's because the fans in here are so fast. They, they spin 1400, 1500 RPM as noted. That's going to be a bit louder. Uh, so yeah, the, basically the trade-off here is if you want acceptable cooling performance, which is clearly possible as we've demonstrated, you do have to sacrifice some noise. If you're willing to sacrifice on the noise front and have a bit louder of a system, you can circumvent some of the cooling impedance that the case naturally provides. If you can't deal with noise, then you basically have to go liquid or find a different case. And there are a lot of good cases out there. So to go over a couple of them, this is 110 bucks. The alternative is 170. If you wanted to buy uh, fans for this one, you could buy the $110 one with another blue fan for about $16 and you'd be out well ahead of the RGB version. Uh, alternatives, the PMO one is really good. We still like that case a lot. It doesn't look like this one does. You lose the panoramic thing. If you don't need it, it's a really good case. The PMO two disappointed us. 275R disappointed us uh, because neither of them added anything over their predecessors. And then Fractal has the Meshify C not too distant in price. Corsair has a 400 C not too distant in price. And on the cheaper end, the RL06 once again gets a mention. Those are all cases that we've reasonably liked and would recommend as competitors to this one if you didn't like what you saw with this one. There are surprisingly no huge glaring flaws with thermals. Really was expecting the opposite. The only huge glaring flaw with thermals, I guess there is one, is uh, the proximity of the front acrylic to an externally mounted fan. And thermal take, if you're watching, please add a little bit of depth on that front panel so that that's not an option because the 200 fans look great, but they don't perform well because you're smashing them against glass panel. They, there's zero place for them to get air. Other than that, surprisingly decent, which, uh, which is all it takes to make me happy these days because it's been, been a year of disappointment in cases. But we're, things are looking up. H500P mesh was good. This was better than expected. So hopefully it keeps going that way for the rest of the year. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats like this one. They're on back order. They'll ship within the next two weeks. That's when the next round comes in. I'll see you all next time.